Apple has been battling tooth and nail with Samsung for the position of most popular smartphone manufacturer worldwide. And currently, Apple is in the lead by a small margin. And there is a lot that they've been doing to close that gap against the competition. For one, the price difference between Samsung and Apple phones has practically vanished. And in some cases, Apple actually has cheaper flagships. So the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the Galaxy S22 Ultra, they cost exactly the same for the maxed out one terabyte models uh, and the same thing for the half terabyte storage models. But you know what? You actually save $100 if 256 gigabytes of storage is enough for you. Same deal on the 128 GB model. We've got that for $10.99 with the iPhone and we've got it for $11.99 with the S22 Ultra. Same thing if we compare Apple's second best model, the iPhone 14 Plus to Samsung's, the Galaxy S22 Plus. So the 256 gigabyte iPhone is $50 cheaper than the 256 gig Samsung, and the 128 gig model is $100 cheaper. Wow, look at that. You can't even get the S22 Plus for under $1,000 if you have to pay any sales tax on it. Then there's the brand signaling. Even though Samsung phones are slightly more expensive, they still aren't as iconic as the iPhones are. Nobody really says, oh, look at me, I've got a Samsung phone. But more important than that, is the security and the privacy that the end users have on these devices. Because not only are these phones coming from different manufacturers, but they're also running different operating systems under the hood. iPhones are of course running iOS and Samsung phones are running Android. And that is actually where most of the important differences arise. By default, iOS is more secure than Android. There has been far fewer vulnerabilities found compared to iOS. And it's not just like Android, you know, randomly went through a rough patch and had a whole lot of historical vulnerabilities that were found through one period. Uh, there was actually a really severe vulnerability that earned the person who reported it several months ago a $70,000 bug bounty. Uh, so this was just patched on Pixel phones in the November 5 security update, so make sure that you install those if you have a Pixel phone. But the bug essentially let anyone that had physical access to your Pixel phone bypass all pin locks and all fingerprint locks, even when it had just been rebooted and it's in that after first boot mode and requires the password to unlock. No, <laughs> with this simple trick, you can just swap the SIM cards of the device that you want to unlock uh, and then enter the PUK code of the new SIM card, the SIM card that you control, which then prompts you to reset that new SIM card's pin, and then bam, it unlocks the phone without ever requiring you to know the device's original pin or have the owner use their fingerprint to unlock it. Now granted, this was only discovered on Pixel phones running vanilla Android, so it's unknown if the issue is present on other manufacturers' devices or if modified Android ROMs would have the same problem. Of course, manufacturers like Samsung they like to introduce a lot of their own software on top of vanilla Android, which can have its own software vulnerabilities. Uh, so that is another difference between the Apple and Android ecosystems is that all of Apple's software, at least as far as the core operating system, iOS is concerned, it's all coming from a single vendor and it's only meant to run on their hardware and that hardware software integration actually gives Apple a big leg up on security. Now, when it comes to privacy, on the surface, Apple seems to win here as well, especially after they introduced app tracking transparency, because now with the tap of a button, you can stop any app on your iPhone from tracking you. 
App tracking transparency has been so effective that it's actually resulted in companies like Facebook, Twitter, and Google that rely very heavily on ads and tracking for their revenue to lose tens of billions of dollars since its introduction. But there's a huge problem with Apple's app tracking transparency and their approach to privacy in general, and that is the fact that it only blocks third-party tracking, not the tracking that Apple does themselves within their own apps, like the App Store itself. Misk recently posted this video and created this thread on Twitter detailing his findings with the excessive fingerprinting and tracking that Apple does through their apps. And I also saw that he has a pinned tweet on his account from October showing that in iOS 16, Apple services that are running on your phone will actually communicate to Apple's servers outside of an active VPN tunnel. So if you have a VPN on your phone and, and you're trying to VPN everything on it uh, to maybe obfuscate your IP address, make it seem like you're in another country or something like that, those Apple services are going to reach around and expose your real IP and they also leak DNS requests. And some of those Apple services that are doing that behavior include clips, files, find my, health, maps, settings, and wallet. Apple has already been showing display ads inside of the App Store, Apple News, and stock apps. And so far, Apple has been making about $4 billion annually from this relatively small amount of tracking and advertising that they've been doing. But they are planning to increase the amount of ad revenue that they're making well past $10 billion in the coming years, which is likely to result in much more aggressive tracking and advertising. It's almost as if this is all part of Apple's plan to first weaken their competition that relied very heavily on advertising for their revenue, and then ramp up their own ad networks so that the people that are wanting to buy ad campaigns to advertise their goods and services, they're gonna end up getting better results from Apple. It's actually pretty brilliant on Apple's end because a lot of people would pay good money to have some kind of ad shown to everyone with an iPhone. I mean, you gotta think, that's a pretty big demographic. And the worst thing about iPhones, which makes Apple's ad strategy that much worse, is the lockdown nature of iOS. You can't sideload apps onto iOS, so you're going to be forced to use the App Store, Apple's App Store, to get your software, and you're going to see ads in that App Store. There's no way to remove any tracking that Apple decides to embed within the operating system in any other areas within any of their other services because all of the code for iOS is locked down. Whereas on Android, you can de-Google your phone. And in some cases, you can install modified Android operating systems altogether that are more private and secure, like Calyx OS or Graphene OS especially. And that's why I only said by default, comparing stock iOS to stock Android or whatever vendor brand of Android like Samsung, OnePlus, et cetera, in that comparison, iOS is more secure. But Graphene OS, probably even more secure than iOS. Although it is kind of hard to say for sure because there's far fewer people using Graphene OS. And so not as many people are spending that much time trying to secure it and trying to hack it compared to iOS. Plus the bug bounties that Apple pays can be very lucrative compared to what a project like Graphene OS could pay out. But still, the fact that Graphene OS is open source and the Android ecosystem is open enough in general to allow for doing things like de-Googling on just about any handset, that ultimately makes it better for your privacy and security than iPhones. You might not believe in these privacy concerns with Apple and iOS right now because historically, Apple has been pretty good as a company when it comes to consumer privacy. 
but the lockdown nature of iOS makes it a very slippery slope. It's ultimately in their hands and the changes that we've already seen to iOS, like the ads within the App Store and Apple News, the scanning of images and videos in your iCloud for CSAM, the apps developed by Apple that are pre-installed on your iPhone that refuse to send their traffic through a VPN, and the hostile attitude that Apple has towards sideloading apps on iPhones. All of this shows that Apple is more than willing to go down that slippery slope if it means making a few extra bucks.